Hi guys and welcome to another video on this data mining the social media uh, video tutorials and today we are going to talk about machine learning and machine learning is the discipline that studies and develops algorithms to learn from and make predictions on data it is strongly related to data mining and sometimes the names of the two fields are used interchangeably. A common distinction between the two fields is roughly given as follows. Machine learning focuses on predictions based on known properties of the data, while data mining focuses on discovery based on unknown properties of the data. Both fields borrow algorithms and techniques from their counterpart. One of the goals of these uh, video tutorials is to be practical, so we acknowledge that academically the two fields, despite the big overlap, often have distinct goals and assumptions, but we will not worry too much about it. Uh, some examples of machine learning applications include the following. Deciding whether an incoming email is spam or not, or choosing the topic of a news article from a list of known subjects such as sport, finance, or politics. Analyzing bank transactions to identify fraud attempts. Deciding from the Apple query whether a user is interested in fruit or in computers. And some of the most popular method methodologies can be categorized into supervised and unsupervised learning approaches. And this is, a sim this is an oversimplification that doesn't describe the whole breadth and depth of the machine learning field, but it's a good starting point to appreciate some of its tech uh, technicalities. Uh, supervised learning approaches can be employed to solve problems such as classification, in which the data comes with the additional attributes that we want to predict. For example, the label of a class. <coughs> a class. Uh, in this case, the classifier can associate each input object with the desired output by inferring from the features of the input objects. The classifier can then predict the desired label for the new unseen inputs. Common techniques uh, include naive base, support vector machine and models that belong to the neural networks family such as perceptions or multi-layer perceptions excuse me such as per perceptrons or multi-layer perceptrons The simple inputs used by the learning algorithm to build the mathematical model are called training data while the unseen inputs that we want to obtain a prediction on are called test data inputs of a machine learning algorithm are typically in the form of a vector with each element of the vector representing a feature of the input for supervised learning approaches the desired output to assign to each of the unseen inputs is typically called label or target. Unsupervised learning approaches are instead applied to problems in which the data come without a corresponding output value. A typical example of this kind of problem is clustering. In this case, an algorithm tries to find hidden, hidden structures in the data in order to group similar items into clusters. Another application consists of identifying items that don't appear to belong to a particular group. For example, outlier detection. 
An example of a common clustering algorithm is k-means. The main Python package for machine learning is skykit-learn. It's an open source collection of machine learning algorithms that includes tools to access and pre-process data, evaluate the output of an algorithm, and visualize the results. And you can in install skykit-learn with the common procedures via the pip install command. So without digging into the details of the techniques, we will now walk through an application of scikit-learn to solve a clustering problem. Uh, as we don't have social data yet, we can employ one of the data sets that is shipped together with scikit-learn. The data that we are using is called the Fisher's Iris dataset, also referred to as Iris Flower dataset. It was introduced in the 1930s by Ronald Fisher, and it's uh, today one of the classic datasets. Given its small size, it's often used in the literature of, for toy examples. The dataset contains 50 samples from each of the three species of iris, and for each sample, four features are reported, the length and width of petals and sepals. The dataset is commonly used as a showcase example for classification as the data comes with the correct labels for each sample. While its application for clustering is less common, mainly because there are just two well visible clusters with a rather obvious separation. Given its small size and simple, simple structure, it makes the case for a gentle introduction to data analysis with SkyKit-Learn. Uh, yeah, and if you want to try these examples yourself, you need to... Uh, also, if you want the data visualization, visualiz visualization part, you need to install also the matplot lib library if you're not using uh, Jupyter or Anaconda uh, application just use pip install matplotlib so we'll dis uh, have more discussion on data visualization with Python in later videos so if you take a look at this example and I will run it and I will then explain it in a bit. It ran the code. First, uh, what this uh, code does is that we load the data set into the iris variable, which is an object containing both the data and information about the data. In particular, the data iris.data contains the data itself in the form of a numpy array or arrays while the iris.target contains a numeric label that represents the class a sample belongs to in each sample vector the four values represent respective respectively sepal length in centimeters sepal width in centimeters, pedal length in centimeters, and pedal width in centimeters. Using the slicing notation for the NumPy array, we extract the third and fourth element of each sample into pedal underscore length and pedal underscore width, respectively. There will be these will be used to plot the samples in a two-dimensional representation even though the vectors have four dimensions. The clustering process consists in two lines of code. One to create an instance of the k-means algorithm and the second to fit uh, function the data to the model. 
The simplicity of this interface is one of the characteristics of SkyKitLearn, which in most cases allows you to apply learning algorithms with just a few lines of code. For the application of the k-means algorithm, we choose the number of clusters to be 3, as this is given by the data. Keep in mind that knowing the appropriate number of clusters in advance is not something that usually happens. Determining the correct or the most interesting number of clusters is a challenge in itself. Distinct from the application of a clustering algorithm per se, as the purpose of this example is to briefly introduce SkyKitLearn and the simplicity of its interface, we take this shortcut. Normally, more effort is uh, put into preparing the data in a format that is understood by SkyKitLearn. The second half of the example serves the purpose of visualizing the data using matplotlib. Firstly, we define a color scheme to visually differentiate the three clusters using red, yellow, and blue defined in the color underscore scheme list. Second, secondly, we will exploit the fact that both the real labels and cluster associations for each sample are given as integers starting from zero, so they can be used as indexes to match one of the colors. So notice that while the numbers for the real labels are associated to the particular meaning of the labels, that is, a class name, the cluster numbers are simply used to clarify that a given sample belongs to a cluster, but there is no information on the meaning of the cluster. Specifically, the three classes for the real labels are Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica, respectively respectively, the three species of irises, iris represented in the dataset. And the last lines of the example produce two scatterplots, scatterplots uh, of the data, one for the real labels and another for the cluster association, using the petal length and width as two dimensions. And the two plots uh, I have put my um, path here, so you should find it here. So these the two plots are represented in these two images. The position of the item in the two plots is of course the same, but what we can observe is how the algorithm has split the three groups. In particular, the cluster at the bottom left is clearly separated by the two other, and the algorithm can easily identify it without doubt. Instead, the other two clusters are more difficult to distinguish as some of the elements overlap. So the algorithm makes some mistakes in this context. Uh, once again, it's worth mentioning that here we can spot the mistakes because we know the real class of each, each sample. The algorithm has simply created an association based on the features given to it as an input. So these uh, images are a 2D representation of the iris data, colored according to the real labels, which is on the left, and clustering results on, on uh, the right. So that's it for this video and in the next video we will talk about natural language processing so see you in the next video